Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Dragon Network's virtual Power Lunch series. Today, I am beyond excited to not only interview a very successful Drexel alum, but this specific alum is also my favorite professor here at Drexel, Chris Finnan. Chris received his Doctor of Education at Drexel in 2015 and is now a beloved professor here at the LeBeau College of Business. We'll be asking him questions that have been gathered by alumni and current students about his time here at Drexel, as well as his career outside of Drexel. We are so happy to have you here today with us, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's awesome. I'm, I'm really honored to have the chance to spend some time with you. And yeah. you're one of my favorites of all oh, time as well. You didn't have to so thank you. There. I'm so honored. <laughs> so, um... Let's start off with a super dire, important question that has been on my mind this entire year here. Um, we have to start with the bow tie. Tell me the story <laughs> of uh, your bow tie collection, why you wear yep. it, because yep. I yep. have always seen you wearing one. Yep. Uh, so the bow tie has become part of my brand for sure. Um, and it started very whimsically. My wife and I were out suit shopping one day and i said hmm do you think i could get away with one of these she's like i don't know let's try so you know in there we are in the store i forget which store but there we are in the store and uh try one on and she's like yeah you can absolutely get away with that so one thing goes to another and it just became the only type of tie that i wear and you know, in full disclosure, something that I noticed about myself was that on the days when I would bow tie it up, uh, my self-esteem went through the roof. You know, I found myself walking with my shoulders back and my head up, that it became one of those confidence things for me that I feel like not too many people can really get away with wearing a bow tie, but I feel like I can. I feel like it's become part of an extension of me. And so as a result, it it gives me this weird Superman kind of confidence. Um, so I would say, you know, that's really why it continues is because it helps it helps me to kind of say, yeah, I belong here. Yeah, I belong in this room. I belong in front of this crowd. I belong wherever I am. Uh, because of this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think everybody needs that kind of sense of swagger, honestly, whenever in yeah. the room, especially you talking in front of hundreds of people with your job and everything. So yeah. that's yeah. pretty cool. And I have to admit the bow tie is always pretty, pretty cool whenever you walk into a room. <laughs> so that's pretty Thank awesome. You. Yeah. Um, the collection the collection has grown the collection has grown it's just over a hundred just over a hundred now and i have zero like <laughs> long traditional ties wow. zero zero <laughs> you, you fully made the transition into specific fully made the transition tie. wow yeah that's impressive yep. will it just keep growing when the years go by or are you pretty specific it will just keep it on growing it will just keep on growing oh yeah i love it do you have a Drexel bow tie or is that too niche of a tie to have? No, I have I have a few that are the colors of my background. Okay. The oh, I see. more blue than gold or more gold than blue, but there are I have a bunch that are Drexel colors. <laughs> so they come out on like open house days. Oh yeah. They come out on accepted students days. They come out on the first day of class. Uh, so yeah, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of Drexel support ones as well. Oh yeah, has to be. So, uh, pretty good segue here. Um, speaking of Drexel, can you talk about, uh, your specific Drexel story with the school of education, mm -hmm. kind of how you ended up to become a Drexel sure. dragon yourself? Sure. So, uh, we had in LeBeau, we had, a a Dean that I reported to, he was my direct boss, uh, Frank Linehan. And Frank and I spoke all the time, just how are things going for you and your team? What do you need help with? What's going well? All of those sorts of one-on-one -on -one meeting topics. And one day, Frank said, 
you know, if you want to continue to make such a positive impact in higher education, you need to go and get a doctorate. That the doctorate will give you additional respect in the room, that the doctorate is um, is going to showcase to people that you really do belong in the in the room in certain cases. And I never saw myself as as being a, a student at that level. I never saw um, I never saw that as an option. Uh, I'm the first person in my family to get an undergraduate degree. I'm the first person in my family to get a master's degree. And now my boss is telling me I should go get a doc. And in that same meeting, he told me about the the new uh, doctoral degree that the School of Education was offering. And he's was raving about it, talking about how it was really tailor-made for folks like me that came to the classroom with business experience, that did not want to be a full-time researcher, but wanted to be a better teacher. And that that's what really drew me to the to the program was Frank's recommendation, but then also it was seen as a chance for good teachers to become great and for great teachers to become among the best. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, that's if I were in, yeah, if I were in your shoes and you already did undergrad, masters, and then your boss mm -hmm. tells you go back to school, that's definitely a challenging decision, but definitely an important decision yeah. to make. And it definitely, do you think that yeah. was your time getting your EDD was uh, challenging or was it kind of a smooth process to go back to school? It was really hard. Yeah. Um, you know, I had I had a great job, which I still do at Drexel, um, that demanded a lot of time and energy. I was also married with a young child at home. And, um, you know, so there was a lot going on personally that made it difficult. And then you toss in school and uh, suddenly you're you're kind of juggling three balls and now you have five that you're juggling yeah. is what it feels like oh, and i'm sure i'm sure many of the folks who are watching this can appreciate going back to school as an adult whether it's to complete your undergraduate degree maybe life got busy and you did, you were unable to finish maybe it's finishing a master's degree maybe it's getting a certificate in some program uh or uh getting a terminal degree it, it's not easy as a as an adult when you're juggling work and family, but uh, I was able to do it thanks to my wife and the support that that she gave. I was able to do it because of my other family members and friends who really chipped in to help with the stupid things like making sure the lawn was cut and uh, all of that stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Definitely having a good support system is a great way to get you through yeah. such a different time in your life, especially with everything yeah. juggling. That's definitely important. And, and even for, and even for you as, as a, a traditional undergrad student, you know how important it is to have a support system in place, whether it's a group of close friends, whether it's a teammates, whether it's folks in Greek life that, that you become good friends with. That support network for all of us is really important as we go through these challenges in school. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. That's definitely key to not wanting to just stop, you know, doing what your yeah. goal is. Totally, totally. Yeah. Um. So next question, can... So you talked to us about your Drexel story, but obviously before that, you've already had a setup career in both education mm -hmm. and other professional aspects. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to us kind of about where you were before Drexel, what you were doing and all yep. of that fun stuff. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's truly a lifetime ago, uh, but a couple of the highlights, I was a super early employee at a, Philadelphia startup at the dawn of the internet, really, um, and, and rode that wave for a little bit. We sold the business to eBay. I spent four years working for eBay, 
uh, during a really exciting time for that company when it was it was a place that was exploding and it uh, was a really exciting time to be there. It was a really exciting time to make close professional connections. Um, so after about four years, I left there and started consulting on my own, got a chance to work with some phenomenal companies on the technology side. But all the while, I knew what I really wanted to do. And what I really wanted to do was be in a college classroom. Uh, you know, the the travel for work, the the stresses that come from that were fantastic. Um, but I knew where I was supposed to be. I knew I was supposed to be in the classroom. Uh, so once the eBay thing slowed down, consulting picked up, I started networking my way into a chance at Drexel and then the rest is, uh, the rest is sort of history. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, as you just stated, you talked about how important gaining connections within the companies that you're already working with and how important that is even trying to get into another company or another getting into yeah. school really. So what yep. would you say is super key to gaining those professional connections? Yeah, you know, now I would challenge folks like yourself to leverage the Drexel network on places like LinkedIn. Yeah. I would challenge you to utilize the network of Drexel alumni that are all over the world who in many cases are really positive, really pumped to help folks like you out. Uh, you know, they remember the we all remember the struggles of trying to get through co-op and get through class. Um, and we're very fortunate. We have alumni placed in great companies, again, around the world, folks that have started great companies and work in positions of power in great companies. Uh, so that's how I would encourage folks to to build out their personal network and professional network is to utilize the the status, really, of being a graduate of Drexel and take advantage of what that means. Yeah, a hundred percent. And obviously self plug the dragon network also pairs with the LinkedIn. Absolutely. I think definitely, yep. I think undergrad students don't realize how important, you know, signing up, creating a profile is in both LinkedIn and yep. dragon network. It's huge to yep. just, it's so easy too to just make those connections really fast because it really does yeah. it for you, honestly, which is a great thing. So definitely it, important. it does. And yeah, it's, it does it all for you. And uh, it's really an important differentiator, as you said, especially for our undergrads. Yeah, totally. Um, also another question on eBay. So yeah. you're saying that was a definitely a pretty exciting time to be there with all the mm -hmm. changes happening. What, what was the most exciting part of working for eBay or working for a high tech company at yeah. that time? Really, the the exciting part for me was just uh, was really being on on the ride. Um, the The company went from, you know, a few people knew it as a place to sell goofy uh, stuffed animals to growing into a place where you could buy a car to growing into really anything that you wanted, you could find on eBay. Uh, I worked on a number of really exciting projects like eBay Motors, um, the eBay acquisition of PayPal, just on and on and on. I had a, a great lens into what it takes to become uh, one of the top tech companies in the world at the time. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so another question, how do you think working having basically a whole career before you kind of jumped into mm -hmm. officially teaching, how do you think that has impacted you both positively and negatively when jumping yeah. back into education? Sure. Uh, so I think in the early years of teaching, that was really important for me uh, because I understood what it took to get projects done at the corporate level. I understood the mindset, I understood the language, I understood um, just, again, how to how to get stuff done, how to rally a team, 
uh, how to figure out requirements, all of those kinds of things. But then after after a bit of time, I realized just how much working in higher ed is you're running a business. You know, you're working in a in a very successful business. And so with some of the work I do in LeBeau, I think about it as I'm running a business. You know, I'm responsible for helping people grow. I'm responsible to a budget. You know, I can't just walk around and spend money however I feel. Uh, and always need to think about what's best for the brand. And those are lessons that I learned during my uh, corporate experience back again a lifetime ago that certainly transcend into into the work we all see happening in LeBeau and in Drexel across. Manage, manage the brand, manage your expenses, take good care of your customers and your suppliers and uh, and good things come. Totally. And I also, as your student, the past basically three terms now, can definitely notice how important you instilled that in your students, kind of how your brand, what you make of yourself can really take you wherever you want. Absolutely. How you make your life and how you yep. make your brand, which is awesome. So that's what I've learned from you so far, but among other cool. things too. Very cool. Yeah. So going off of that, as a student um, and what at both undergrad and master's mm -hmm. getting your doctorate, um, how did you find your goals and within being a student and how did you achieve or kind of aim high for those goals as your time yep. being a student? Yep. Uh, which is a question I absolutely love. I think a lot of folks can relate to it. So again, I was a first generation college student. I didn't know what I didn't know. Uh, my parents didn't know what we didn't know. And so I went to college and it wasn't until my third year as an undergrad that I had fun in the classroom. Everything up until that point was very much just read a book and highlight some random stuff, hope it's on a test. That's what education was to me. And then in my third year as an undergrad, I had an amazing marketing professor uh, named Jim Ogden. And Jim taught me that learning could be fun. And that's where the passion kicked in. That's where the passion for learning kicked in. That's where the passion for business kicked in. That's where the passion for creativity kicked in was because of him. And what he showed me was possible. And by the end of that semester, I said, you know, I was a junior in college and I said, I want to be like him someday. And so what that meant was I needed to get professional experience right away, and then I needed to go get a master's degree um, because you couldn't teach in college without a master's degree. So I went and did those things, and as I was in school getting my master's, I had a professor there named Curtis Bailey who was exactly the same. Like Curtis made learning fun. He showed me that the classroom could be a very vibrant place not some place where someone stands in front of the room and writes a lot of stuff on a board and the people who are seated feverishly write it down, but instead a place that really does have a thriving heartbeat. And then that motivation from Curtis pushed me to go and get a teaching gig at Drexel and then on and on and on. So for me, the the passion, the interest, the desire really came from mentors that I had that showed me life could look different. You know, like the classroom didn't have to be the boring place that I had sat in all those years. It could be a really exciting place where fun stuff happens. Uh, and you can take the guardrails off sometimes and just see where it goes. And that's what I've done throughout my career. And it's a it's a direct result of the influence of those two mentors in my life. So that's where I found my passion. That's where I found my interest was was through the work they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely evident you can kind of find yourself in a lull when you're kind of going to so many classes, just trying to mm -hmm. 
focusing on a good grade rather than what you're actually learning and yeah. trying to actually find something that you're passionate about. So I can definitely yeah. agree with that where it's, you find those professors, you find those people, especially here mm -hmm. at Drexel, that kind of challenge you to have fun with what you're actually doing rather than sitting there kind of zoning out, kind of writing stuff yeah. down, kind of studying, but not actually right. gaining any actual insight. Yep. And you know, you'll, you will, I'm sure, get a lot of that great experience from your role with the Dragon Network. I'm sure you'll get a lot of that great insight on co-op. Uh, so just throw it all into a bag, throw it all into a toolbox and, and get ready to, to go sift through it as you get ready to start your career. Get ready to go sift through it and say, hey, you know what? That's stuff from whoever bring that back and and have a chance to reflect on it again and see how it's going to impact your early professional career, see how it may impact your later professional career. Um, and you'd be surprised, I think. You'll be surprised. Yeah. That's great advice. Um, so right right now, it may see, right yeah. now, it may seem like a lot of mush. Yeah. Um, but again, I think that if you allow yourself the opportunity to go and and sift through some of those things later on maybe it's during the summer uh, yeah. since you have your only summer off only uh, one. <laughs> you know if it's a chance to sift through those things over the summer I think I think it could be hugely positive for you yeah I mean it's definitely on my to-do list especially now that you know it's such an important thing especially with you know I think for super young undergrad students like freshmen mm -hmm. sophomores it's it seems a bit redundant how everybody says, you know, find your passions, find something mm -hmm. that interests you. But I really think that is crucial to making a career that you actually enjoy. And instead of just making money, it's something you Absolutely. possibly may make, may make money with, but also something you enjoy going back to every single day. Yeah, every single day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah. yeah. So, um. Now, as both a previous student of the School of Education and now a faculty member of Drexel, mm -hmm. what would you say is your favorite part of belonging to the Drexel community? Um, you know, I think that the folks in the Drexel community understand what it feels like to work harder than you thought you could. That um, that kind of stick to itiveness, right? Sticking to a challenge that's out there, going through 10 or 11 weeks of class while at the same time doing five, seven, nine, 15 interviews for co op, and then writing the thank you notes that you have to write, and then getting back and having to study for an exam, and then rinse and repeat and do it again the next day. I think that kind of stick to of I've got this goal or objective that I want to go after. It's a great term. It's a great junior year. It's go get a great third co-op. It's go start my career. It's accelerate my career while starting a family. It's having a family and continuing to be a part of the Dragon Network and continuing to give back to the university, like all of those things and so many more showcase that chance to stick to the goals and stick to the passions surrounding the university and, and the college that you were a part of, College of Business, School of Ed, College of Engineering, et cetera. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. It, it, uh, it comes down, it comes down to, to one uh one word which is stick to itiveness. <laughs> Don't ask me to spell that. Oh no. I I bet that's in the dictionary. I sure. <laughs> yeah. Um I completely agree. I think even as a first year student here, I can definitely tell there are so many there's a huge diversity of students and backgrounds and ages even and everyone kind of has mm -hmm. that same goal of sticking to something, sticking to Yep. what you want to do in the future, what you want to do within this 10-week term, what you want to do by junior yep. year. I think there's always 
everyone's pretty instilled with their goals, which is like super inspiring to see, yeah. especially if you don't feel inspired, you look around and you're mm -hmm. like, I'm in the right place because all these people can yeah. push me to beyond my limits, which is a great thing to have That's as right. a college. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think a lot of us also know when to stop. Yeah. And when to slow down and especially at the undergraduate level, you know, when to slow down, when to kind of pull back everything. Um, and that's important too, you know, is, is pushing forward as hard as you can and doing the, doing the work that needs to be done, but also having that understanding about yourself that you need to take a break, that you need to step back for a little bit um, before you burn out. It's pretty easy to it's pretty easy to burn out at Drexel because of all of the things that all of the opportunities that are available. But I think most of us have figured out how to slow down a little bit. Totally. Totally agree. It may take some time to kind of figure out, like slow your roll, but I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. definitely important to kind of have that good ratio of work hard, but yeah. also Let's calm down here for a little bit and then go back. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. It's what a it's what a good friend of mine and also uh Drexel alum uh it's it's something that she calls uh being careful of the Drexel washing machine. <laughs> that you just get spun around and around and around and it's being able to press pause on the Drexel washing machine. Totally. I'm I'm gonna say that now. That's a that's a good one. It's a washing machine. Oh my gosh! So I'll introduce yeah. I'll introduce you guys. Oh yeah, have to. Um, that kind of goes into our our last question here. So far is um, what advice do you have for the younger generation at Drexel, both students and recent graduates graduating this year or the past couple of mm -hmm. years? Yep. Uh, so for our current for the current Drexel student, my strong recommendation would be to get involved, would be to just go out and, uh, you know, a, a Drexel alum that I'm still friends with, Brad, his he came to Drexel and didn't know how to play field hockey, but it interested him. You know, he watched the girls field hockey team in high school. Well, he gets to Drexel and he, he played on the club field hockey team his four years at Drexel. Um, that wasn't something he came in planning to do, but he went and played club field hockey and met some great friends and learned new mindsets. Um, so not just things in your major, not just things in your college, but things like club field hockey or go through the list of great organizations that are available at Drexel and, and go to a few meetings just to meet people, just to learn more about what they stand for. And for our young alumni, I would say, do everything you can to continue to stay connected with the university. Do everything you can, you know, read the newsletters that come out, read the updates, follow Drexel in the news and continue to, to be an asset to us, continue to be an asset to the university, continue to be someone that our students, those coming up behind you, you know, that continue to think about the ways that you can help them, the ways that we can all continue to raise the profile of Drexel. Um, I think those are some things that can really, that we can all benefit from. Totally. Yeah, that was a good answer. Especially, I think, you know, a after you just graduated, you're kind of just like, okay, what now? But then I feel like at the mm -hmm. same time, you have to think of what Drexel has done for you and what it still can do for you in the future, which is a great, mm -hmm. great thing to have. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Um, so that, that sums up all the questions we have today. Again, thank you so much for doing this, for taking your time out yeah. for the awesome responses you gave me today. I know both alumni and students and I will appreciate them for years to come. And um, we welcome everyone for our next Power Lunch within the next month and continue to 
uh, you know, tell everyone to utilize Dragon Network to connect with one another. Thanks again so much for joining us today.